there. So in this occasion, we got this set of functions defined everywhere on the real line. So basically, are just functions from reals to reals. That's what I have right in here. Um, but these functions satisfy a particular condition, and is that if we evaluate that functions on one, that is equal to zero. So we got uh, a set of functions that satisfy this condition. So we can write this space in this way. And also, we need to define two operations. So the sum operation of functions are going to be defined in this way. So with some two functions will be just uh, fx plus gx. And the uh, square multiplication is just taking the square scalar multiplying to the whole function. So here is something important to, to, to verify, and is that given this, we need to verify the, the 10 condition, the, the 10 axioms for a vector space to see if this uh, space is a vector space. So the first axiom is related to the closeness of the uh, sum operation. That means if that we take two, two functions on this space, v, then the sum is also on v. So how to check this? Well, the first thing is really easy is if we, we, we have two functions that uh, are defined on the real line and we sum them together, they, they are also going to be defined on the real line. So that's one of the things. But the other thing is that we need to, 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 to check if the extra condition on the space is satisfied. That means if the sum of these two functions evaluated at one is also equal to zero. It's not that hard to prove that because we know how, is, how the sum of uh, functions behave. So f plus g uh, at one is equals to f evaluated at 1 plus g at 1. And we know that uh, these two functions are part of this space. That means that they evaluate to 0 both. So we got 0 plus 0. And this is, again, equals to 0. So in general, when we sum together two functions, uh, they, the sum is closed. That means that the sum also lives in the space v. Then we need to prove the other axioms related with the sum. So the next is the commutativity of the sum operation. That means if we take f plus g, in this case, of x, we know that this uh, operation is defined as f of x plus gx. And they are just functions, real num they're mapping real numbers. That means f take real numbers to real numbers. So basically this evaluated at some point will be a number. So these two values here will commute because they are real numbers. So this will, we can exchange them. So we got g of x plus f of x. And then we know that this, based on how is defined the sum operation on this space, will be equals to g plus f of x. So this axiom holds for this uh, space. The next is verify the associativity property. That means now we got three functions. So we need to check if they are equal, if we group them differently. So f plus g plus h times x, uh, evaluated at x. So we apply the, the, the definition of the sum operation on this part. So we got, we have f of x plus g plus h of x. And then we apply again, how, how is the definition of the sum operation in this space? So we got f of x plus g of x and plus h of x. The right hand side now is this. We have group f plus g plus h of x. So we apply here the definition of the summation on this space. So we got f plus g x plus hx. 
And then here we apply again the definition of the sum operation and we got f of x plus g of x plus h of x. And as you can see, they are both equal. So this axiom also is satisfied. The next is to define the null vector. That means a function that evaluates to zero in all the real line that I have defined this in this way. Actually, the, the, the zero vector should satisfy this condition. If we sum these two functions, they return the same function f. But that is satisfied by this constant function that evaluates everywhere uh, is equal to zero. And you can verify that this function is also part of the space B because it, it is zero everywhere. So that means if we evaluate that one, this is also going to be zero. So it satisfied the condition uh, of this vector, of this space. So uh, let's uh, verify if this condition is satisfied. So we got F plus the zero function X. And this is equals to f of x plus 0x. But this is 0 everywhere. That means that this is just equals to f of x plus 0, which is just f of x. So the 0 vector exists and is part of this space. So great. The next step is identify if the inverse of uh, these functions also lives on this space B. So that means that for every function living on this space, uh, the inverse is also living in this space and satisfy the condition that if we sum these two functions together, we obtain the, the zero vector. So F plus minus F of x, okay? And we're going to define minus f of x, this function here, as just minus f x, okay? So just putting a minus sign here. So this is becomes, after applying the definition of the summation, is f of x plus minus f of x, but this, as I mentioned, is defined this way, just putting the minus sign in front. So we got f of x minus f of x, and this is equals to zero for every x on the real line. But what is the, the definition is a function that evaluates to zero everywhere, but that is just the definition of the function zero x that is equals to zero for every x on the reals. And this function is unique. That means that this f minus f of x is just the zero, uh, zero function. That corresponds to the zero vector in this space. So great. This also holds the five axiom. Now we start with the axioms related with the, the square product. So the first thing that we need to prove is that the square product is closed. That means that this kind, if, if the, this operation also lives inside this space B. So f of x is just an element of the space V. That means that is a function from defined for all the real line on the reals and also satisfy the condition that at one is equal to zero. So we need to check this. Kf of x is just k times f of x. So this again is this is again a function. We can define this together as a function uh, g of x. This function is also defined on the whole real line. 
Now let's see if this function evaluated at 1 is equals to 0. Well, if we take kf evaluated at 1, this is equals to kf1. And f1 is 0. So we got k, that is a real number, times 0, which is equals to 0. So, yes, it is 0 and is uh, a function defined everywhere on the real line. Therefore, this scalar multiplication lives on this space B. The next is to prove a kind of distributivity property related with the scalars and the vectors in this space. In this case, the vectors are functions, but yeah. Okay, so K, let's take first the left-hand side of this equation. So we know how is defined first um, the uh, K, the, the how to apply First, um, okay, so first we need to take the sum. That means that we got k f plus g. Well, this is just, uh, we need to apply this. That means f of x plus gx, okay, after applying the definition of the sum. And then we need to multiply k on this element. So this becomes kf x plus kgx as is expected. So it holds. The next is a very similar so here we got k plus m is a scalar applied to this function. We got this. Okay. So we know how is defined this on how is the this scalar multiplication for a function defined. So we just put this multiplying the whole function. So we got k m times f of x. Okay. But f is a function from the reals to the reals. That means that this is like uh, at each point x, we got a real number. So we can distribute this real number among these parentheses. So we got k f x plus m f x. And this is the definition of k f apply to x plus m f x that is what we want so yes it holds as well then we got this uh, associativity property for the scalars so here we got k m f x so first let's take out this part. So we got we have k times m f x. Okay, so here we just apply the definition of the scalar uh, product on this space. And then we reduce this part. So here we got k m f of x. And the right hand side. We got km, this is a just, we can identify this as just one scalar applied to f, x. So we apply here the definition of the scalar product onto the space and is just taking this out, is just multiplying the whole function. So that gives us km f of x. And both are the same. So this is satisfied, this axiom. And the last axiom is, is trivial, actually. is just taking one 
times the function to, 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 to check that it, the identity satisfy this condition. So one times f of x is just one times f, but it's just f of x. So it also holds. So we have verified that for all the 10 axioms, this space uh, satisfy all of them. So as a conclusion, V is a vector space. V is a vector space.